Hey everyone, hope you're doing well today. As promised, I'm going to be delivering you my ideal support build for my Zealot. I went with a theme this time since I've been doing a little reading on the Warhammer 40k lore. I made a build embodying a Sister of Battle, using the new Relic ability and curing corruption off of your teammates. This build can be used to clear out hordes very easily with your Heavy Sword, Immolation Grenades, and your Flamer. But no class is perfect, as this one relies more on your team looking out for ranged targets while you support them with toughness regen and protect them from oncoming disablers and horde control. Alright, so let's jump right into the build. First off, we have the Tertolski Mark IX Heavy Sword for crowd control and the occasional special that sneaks up in your team's backline. This is also great for sweeping heavy attacks with Cleave, which will later play into our strengths in this build. Now, I didn't get a perfect roll on my perks, as I would have probably preferred to have damage on flak armored enemies and unarmored enemies, but sometimes we get what we get and we have to work with it. This thankfully rolled with sprint efficiency, so I'm not too upset. We can use that to our advantage to get to our teammates quicker if needed. The blessings I went with since we have a high chance of cleaving with this weapon were Rampage for maximizing our damage by hitting at least 3 people and Headtaker which gives us an increase in our power for 3.5 seconds on hit, stacking up to 5 times. These blessings allow us to chain heavy attacks upon incoming horde enemies while maximizing our damage output, leaving more room to maneuver in close quarter combat. The Purgation Flamer is our reliable ace for whenever hordes become overwhelming, with our perks aligned with doing more damage to unarmored enemies and infested enemies. With my blessings, I found that testing Blaze Away works really well with this weapon because of the creeping power increase that you receive with every 10% of your magazine spent. As you continue spraying into the crowd, your power only grows stronger. The only caveat is that you need to spray continuously. With Fan the Flames, our primary attack ignores stagger resistance on burning enemies, as well as dealing 30-45% to impact. This is great for maintaining the horde while also being able to constantly stagger everything besides monstrosities and bosses. So with my curios, I like to have at least 15% in max health and toughness, as well as a wound if things go bad. On these curios, you want to favor your weaknesses, which is anything that can affect you with range. So resistance on snipers, gunners, and flamers are all good picks. And having your combat ability regen is worth investing in since you want to be able to use your relic more quickly. The other side to this is having your toughness regenerate faster since you're going to be clearing the horde most of the time. The accelerated regen is really nice to have whenever you don't have your ability readily available to you. It goes well with our passives and abilities later in the talent tree. As for the talent tree, I try to utilize more supportive abilities since the majority of people are running builds that are focused around speed and crit. I wanted to change things up to make this class more viable in any difficulty, as well as make your life a lot easier when it comes to survivability. I'm going to play out the damnation mission while explaining the strengths within this build. If you use this build correctly, you really shouldn't have any issues besides ranged enemies. The relic is key to maintaining a nice balance within each encounter, but save it for big moments like waves of elites, or whenever a monstrosity pushes you into a choke point. Ideally though, you can use it whenever you notice a teammate that's in need, but try to save it for emergencies as it can turn the tide of battle very quickly into your favor. Chorus of Spiritual Fortitude is our main ability. Using the relic, allies will have a stun immunity and invulnerability. This also replenishes 45% toughness to all allies within coherency, and it can also give your teammates who have maximum toughness additional stacks up to plus 100. The ability modifiers make using this relic even more powerful. With Banishing Light, we can stagger and suppress enemies within our pulse's range, giving our teammates time to kill everything around us. Holy Cause gives us and our allies plus 25% toughness damage reduction for 10 seconds. This is one of the best modifiers for our relic, especially in situations against monstrosities. With Invocation of Death, we reduce our combat ability cooldown by 1.5 seconds with every critical melee hit. Our grenade that fits the role of our flamer build is the Immolation Grenade. It leaves a layer of flames on the ground burning and staggering enemies. This is incredibly effective if you don't have time to pull out your flamer to fight an oncoming horde. Since I spoke about embodying a Sister of Battle, they usually go out of their way to deal with Chaos Worshippers. Since Corruption and Chaos go hand in hand, I felt that using the Beacon of Purity as my aura would help elevate that feeling. This passive heals 1.5 Corruption from the current wound affected for you and your allies. Our keystone ability is Blazing Piety. It gives us a plus 15% critical hit chance for 8 seconds whenever we are in Fury. Fury is triggered anytime 25 enemies have died within 25 meters of you. Our two keystone modifiers are Fury Rising, which allows critical hits to also count towards Fury buildup, and Righteous Warrior, which grants us a plus 10% critical hit chance from Blazing Piety. The crit chance is extremely helpful as it will help reduce the cooldown of our relic. The passives I chose strengthen all of the weapons I have. With Anoint in Blood, we gain a plus 25% base range damage, but it is reduced the further we are from our target. 
This is great for the Flamer because Hordes will push in anyway, giving you a guaranteed damage boost. The Stain gives us 5% melee damage on our next melee hit for each enemy hit, and it stacks 5 times. This is why I like using the Heavy Sword's Wide Swing, matched with its cleaving ability. You'll always be hitting multiple targets, granting you more damage with every swing. The passive Enemies Within, Enemies Without replenishes 2.5% toughness per second while we're within 5 meters of at least 3 enemies. Again, this build is very strong against crowd control, and this only helps maintain your survivability. Faithful Frenzy gives us 10% melee attack speed, which is pretty self-explanatory, and Hammer of Faith gives us a plus 30% to our impact strength. This is great for our Flamer stagger potential against enemies. Punishment also grants us plus 30% impact strength for 5 seconds when hitting at least 3 enemies. This can also be stacked up to 5 times, and when you gain max stacks, you gain uninterruptible. This allows you to not be staggered during the animation of an attack. I chose Purge the Unclean, which gives us a 20% increase to damage against infested and unyielding enemies. I also chose Shield of Contempt, which triggers when you or a teammate takes damage. Upon getting hit, they gain a plus 75% damage reduction for 4 seconds, and this can trigger every 10 seconds, making anyone that gets hit a little bit more tankier to kill. Sustained Assault gives us plus 4% melee damage for 5 seconds on hitting an enemy with a melee attack, and it can be stacked 5 times. The Emperor's Bullet gives our melee attack plus 30% impact strength, allowing us to stagger, and whenever our flamer is empty, we gain an additional 10% towards our melee attack speed. With the Emperor's Retribution, we knock back the enemy that hits us with a melee attack. With a cooldown of 10 seconds, it gives you enough breathing room to acknowledge the hit and take them out. The Voice of Terror replenishes 2.5% toughness on range kills. Whenever the Horde becomes overwhelming, this is incredibly useful as it will help you out when you don't have your ability off cooldown. And lastly, Vicious Offering. This is great for our heavy sword because of the ability to cleave with a heavy attack, meaning you'll kill multiple enemies within a single swing sometimes, and upon a heavy attack kill, we also replenish 7.5% of our own toughness. For the operative modifiers, I went with giving myself a boost towards melee damage, movement speed, enemy suppression, toughness, and toughness damage reduction. Overall, this build was a blast to put together. I enjoyed making a theme out of it and relating it to something within the Warhammer setting. I really hope you like this theme build that I went with, and thank you again for taking the time to watch my video. I hope this helps you out, and I really hope you're having a good time with Darktide. While I've been testing out each of these builds, I've had a lot of fun playing with newer players. And in doing so, I've realized a lot of new players both in my comment section and in-game are struggling with some of the things that Darktide doesn't do well explaining. I plan on making a video soon giving you all some tips and tricks to make your experience a little bit easier. Anyways, I'm going to go finish working on my Ogrim build, which I'm very excited to show off. But until then, I'm going to leave you with this Damnation match showcasing this build. Until next time, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Enjoy. to position.
I praise thee, beloved Emperor, for this bounty. is a suitable tutor for us! The righteous be undeserving of the priest's training method!
Cage are out yet via hold.
Shouty uses many big words. I would like to learn big words. Become more somnambulist. I feareth it is not just the words that eludeth these, but also their meaning. It's true. I'm often very pentatonic. Can you teach me something? Control can then be restored. 
Yeah. <laughs>